Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, you'll enter the room with your mics muted because that just was a little bit easier. Um, you can feel free to turn your mic on or your video on or off. That's totally up to you. Um, you can ask questions via the chat room or with your voice, whichever you'd prefer to do. Um, and I'll mention that again before we go live. Um, I'm Kate with Glazers and uh, we'll, we'll have some fun this afternoon. So um, we, we're expecting a lot of people. We have Mark on the screen here. Um, Mark works with Panasonic. Um, he's been in the photo industry. How long have you been in the photo industry, Mark? Uh, I've worked for Panasonic for 13 years, but I've been in the photo industry for, let's say at least 30 years. <laughs> okay, wow. Um, so Mark is a, an expert in a lot of things. He's also just a nice guy and uh, we'll, we'll have some fun in this little live session today. So um, also if you have Panasonic questions, you can ask those too. Um, but our topic for today is focused on black and white photography. Um, and Mark's gonna share some images and talk about those. And there's plenty of opportunity for people to ask questions. Again, you can do that via the chat room or uh, with your voices, <laughs> it's totally up to you. Uh, some people get camera shy. <laughs> Some people get camera shy and um, just, you know, want to ask questions in the chat room. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of our plan for today. Somebody's having lunch. I see some grapes. <laughs> yeah. Or an apple. It's an apple. Is it an apple? <laughs> yes. It's an apple. <laughs> it's 10% of an apple. 10% of an apple. Oh, I recognize your face. Let's see. So while we're waiting to get started as well, um, uh, again, I'm Kate with Glazers. If you guys have uh, suggestions for topics for these live streams that we're doing, uh, please feel free to send me an email. Um, my email address at Glazers is Kate H, so K-A-T-E-H at GlazersCamera.com. I'd love to hear suggestions and ideas from you guys um, on what other topics you'd like to see us try and cover during this crazy time that we're in right now. So think about that. If you have some ideas, we'd love to hear them. Um, I'm expecting that we'll get a few more people online shortly here. Um, but just to take a few minutes to talk about Glazers and welcome you all. Um, again, my name is Kate Haley. I run the events uh, for Glazers. If you've been to any of our events, we've probably met before. Um, I teach a fair bit with the store as well. And um, in our current time with this crazy virus that we're trying to fight and um, all this stay at home and social distancing, um, we thought it would be a good idea to do some online education and hopefully provide some inspiration for photography while you're at home with the family or your partner or your pets. Um, so there's that. Um, and I also want to mention that Glazers is open. The stores is open for web sales and curbside pickup Monday through Friday. Um, so if there are needs you have for photography gear, uh, feel free to go to our website look for what you're looking for and place an order online for pickup or delivery. Um, I believe orders over $50 uh, are free shipping as well. So there are some restrictions that apply there, but we're here for you in this crazy time. So just know that um, we're a resource for you if you need some photo equipment while you're here. Um, one more thing before we get started and I formally introduce Mark is um, that we do have several more of these live streams planned. Uh, throughout April, and we'll probably plug some in for May as well. Um, we're going to do everything from some lighting demos to um, Lightroom to landscape photography. Um, maybe uh, Mark will come back and do a video workshop. Mark, <laughs> maybe yeah, you I, think, I, I would love to. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're trying to, to plan a variety of different topics, um, different times a day, and um, you know hopefully again provide some inspiration for you guys in this time where we're we're not able to be creative in the way that we normally would be um so i'm gonna kick things off 
just a side note, we are recording these. Our plan is to make them available on our YouTube page. Hopefully by the weekend, we'll have the ones that we've done this week. Um, so as you enter the room, your mic will be muted. If you do want to ask a question with your voice, all you have to do is unmute your mic. Um, the same thing with your video. I see a lot of the guy, a lot of you have your cameras off and that's fine. We also have the chat room available. So if you have questions that you wanna ask, you can simply uh, type them into the chat room and I can convey those questions to Mark as we go through this. Um, this is, you know, we're here for you guys. So this is intended to be an interactive experience. So don't be shy. If you have questions, please ask them, okay? Um, so I will introduce Mark and Mark Toll again, who we, I've already mentioned his name a couple of times, but Mark is with Panasonic. He is our regional Panasonic rep. Um, he has been in the photo industry for at least 30 years, <laughs> maybe about 30 years. Maybe, maybe more than that, but we won't, more than that. <laughs> we won't bobble about that. <laughs> um, but he's, he's a really fantastic guy. He does a lot of great street photography when he travels. Um, and um, he has a real love of black and white photography. So when we were discussing topics, that was a topic that came up naturally. So I'm gonna let Mark kick it off. Um, and there you go, Mark. Okay, thanks, Kate. <laughs> and thanks to everybody for, uh, for being here. I, I, I know you've uh, got a lot of other things to do, right? <laughs> so um, Kate asked me about black, what topic I'd like to talk about. And my, my love is black and white. Uh, just to, to my background a little bit. So I've worked for Panasonic. And even though, even though I work for Panasonic, this is not a Panasonic ad. Um, hopefully it'll make you want to run out and buy a Panasonic camera, but this isn't focused on Panasonic cameras. Everything I'm showing um, can be done with most cameras, definitely with all mirrorless cameras. But I started out uh, shooting pictures in black and white years ago when it was mostly just black and white film. Then I went to work in photo lab. So I spent most of my career processing color in black and white um, pictures in, in professional photo labs. So what I want to do is this isn't a formal presentation. I have a PowerPoint because that's the best place to put these um, that I just want to go through and kind of go through my black and white thoughts and processes. And um, Kate can jump in or if you have a question, you can ask the question as we go along. Uh, I'm fine with any of that. So you can either put it in the chat and Kate can ask me or you can unmute your microphone and ask me. So now I'm going to share my screen and show you uh, a PowerPoint I put together. And this is mostly just some photographs. Uh, is that showing up okay, Kate? Yep. Good. Okay, so again, I, I'd really like to thank Blazers and, and Kate for putting this on. Um, they're just a great partner. And when they reopen, uh, I plan on being down there and answering any other questions you've got or, 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 or hopefully selling you a camera. Um, so these are pictures that I've taken, uh, that I took back in when I first started. <laughs> I've gotten old enough that I'm trying to, I'm trying to avoid using years. And so um, these are the first pictures I took using Tri-X Plus X film and developing them in my own darkroom. Now, a, a side note about these and why I asked Kate if I could do black and white is during this time when we're all stuck at home, I've, I wanted to start scanning my pictures and putting them on Facebook and Instagram just to kind of entertain people. Um, I was the high school um, photographer, so I have probably uh, five or 10,000 black and white negatives from high school. Uh, how many people have their whole high school experience on film or want it? Um, but what I discovered was I was using a traditional scanner and it was taking me forever. And I found out that there's an app that you can get for a phone or a tablet or a Android or Apple that lets you scan negatives by putting them on a light table and then reversing them so they're like this and then I can post them immediately. Well, that led me to using my Panasonic camera to take a picture of the negative. So I put the negative from these pictures on a light table and I point my Panasonic camera at it with a macro lens so it fills the frame. I take that picture and then I transfer it using Wi-Fi to my um, phone and this app converts it. And I can even do a demonstration of that app at the end of this if, if people would like it. Um, but what got me into modern, so once color came along and, and I shot color for 20 years, I still do, um, I started to try to think how can I, what can I do that's different? Um, you know, what, and, and black and white came up. 
Um, so these pictures, I like, I've tried to capture a vintage look in a lot of my pictures in black and white. This is, I'm in Portland, Oregon. This is a steam train that uh, is in Portland, Oregon that I was the photographer, I was their photographer for a couple of years. And um, if, you've, if you've never seen a photographer, um, O. Winston Link, that's the initial O, Winston Link. Uh, he's my favorite photographer. He shot steam trains back in the 40s and 50s when they were just ending their, their era. And he took a lot of pictures like the one of the two guys in front of the train. So in a lot of situations like this, um, I'll just put the camera in black and white. And, and the reason I do it, so now one question people ask me is, why do you shoot in black and white? Why don't you just shoot in color and then convert it later on in Lightroom or something like that? And the reason is, is I like to see it in the, um, in the I call it the viewfinder, but on a mirrorless camera, you're actually seeing it in black and white. Um, other than, rather than in a DSLR, where you see it in color, but it's shooting, it can shoot in black and white. So I'm seeing this in black and white. I'm seeing it as it looks. Um, and, but uh, one thing to do when I first started doing this, and I still do this a lot, is I shoot a JPEG plus a RAW file. You set your camera to shoot both. And the nice thing is the JPEG is black and white, but if I feel like the color is better, I've got the RAW file. I, it's sort of my safety net. Um, but a lot of times I just use the black and white and I'll talk about how I, uh, how I set them up here in a second. Hey, Mark. Uh, yes, but, yes, Kate. Before we get too far, I've got at least one question about the app that you're talking about that will convert to the negative to a positive or a positive. Yep. The app that you're using. Yes. It is the name of it, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the one I'm using is called film developer. Okay. And, um, are there any weird, like, no ease or anything like that? <laughs> uh, it's it, it's, F, it's cap, capital F, I-L-M, and then develop, developer in the all one word. Okay. Uh, but if you go to, like, I, I use an iPhone. I went to the App Store, and I typed in um, negative film scanner. Okay. And there was, a, there was about five or six of them. There's also slide scanners if you have slides. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't. I picked this one because it was free and I didn't know if this would work or not. And it works so well that I haven't looked at any of the others, but I, I'm not, let's say recommending this one. It just works really well for me. Yeah. Well, and I know that um, in the past I've done exactly what you described where I would take a photo of an image on a light box. Uh -huh. and you can also invert those in Photoshop. So right. If you already have Photoshop and don't necessarily want to install an app, you could load those images into Photoshop and do an invert and that will make it from a negative to a positive. So exactly. there's exactly. lots of ways you can make that happen. Yeah, and then, so these ones that I did, um, I also then, they, they come in to, um, when, you, when I scan them, they come in kind of a yellowish color and, and, pretty, and a little dark. I just use Snapseed, which is my favorite app um, for the phone for adjusting pictures to, to bring them to this level, yeah. Um, so um, sepia, you'll notice in this, you notice in all these pictures, they have a little bit of a warmth to them. And, and it's really more pronounced in this picture. So what I do, and I'll show you the settings I use for this in the next slide, is in the camera, let me, show, let me go to this one. So these are the settings in a Panasonic camera. So in a Panasonic camera, and again, this, any mirrorless camera will do this. I'm not, I'm not saying you gotta buy a Panasonic, it's just a good idea. <laughs> um, is if you go to photo styles, and the camera is normally set for standard, which is color like you're seeing in that picture. I go to monochrome, which is black and white, and immediately see it like that. And again, if I shoot the picture and I'm shooting JPEG, all I get is a black and white picture. But if I'm shooting raw, that's in, in color. Now, the nice thing about um, Panasonic cameras, and I just, I don't know if other cameras do this, is that they allow me to do things like adjust the contrast, the sharpness, um, I can even do uh, color filters, but what I do, and you see in the, in the picture in the bottom right, is I, there's color tone, and if I go to the left there, it adds warmth, and if I go to the right, it adds, um, it makes it colder. So I just add a little bit of sepia right in the, the, the camera. You can also do this in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever program you use. And the reason I do this is I find that the black and whites look a little bit cold on the phone or on um, my computer. So, um, but anyways, you can just do all sorts of adjustments here. In some of our cameras, you can even add grain. Um, so you can make it look like 
like when I used to um, process film and uh, I, I grew up in Florida and I used to process my film at uh, 90 degrees instead of 68. And I never knew any better, but I, I got a great grainy effect that people love these days. Um, this one, cowboy pictures. Um, I shoot a lot of rodeo and cowboy type pictures. And nowadays, this guy I think was wearing like a teal color turquoise type shirt. And it, to me, it just takes the whole atmosphere of the Western away from it. <laughs> um, and then they pick up their phone and they're talking on their phone. But again, I love this because I just wanted something to look very vintage here. Um, one thing I use it for a lot is in the winter. I live in Portland. I assume a lot of you live in Seattle. And as you know, it, it's a little gray for a long time. So the picture of my son and my granddaughter here, this was on a typical gray day when, you know, uh, I pointed the camera at them and there was very little color in it. And black and white can just give you a more interesting look, especially, I, I actually started shooting it because between Portland and Seattle, I, I, I visit the, like when I visit Glazers, I love to walk around downtown. And in the winter time, the buildings, the streets, the cars, everything just has a flat look to it. So I go to black and white and I add a little sepia and all of a sudden I get something that kind of just pops a little bit more. It also works great like for this um, fake sheriff here that we were in a Western event where it's really harsh lighting. This would have looked, um, the color in color this looked very harsh, but in black and white, um, you can get away with sometimes shooting a noonday sun uh, and, and, and still getting a good picture. Well, and I also think that um when we think about images being in black and white, we tend to push the contrast a little bit more. We want the shadows to be deeper. We want the highlights to be brighter um, because it's just an, it kind of makes it look a little bit more interesting. It gives it a little bit more character. A absolutely. Yes. You know, because, you know, in, like he, in his hat there, there's a blown out highlight, you know, and his hair is a little, the highlights a little blown out in the back there where in color that would bother me more than it does in black and white. And plus, the shadows look a lot more interesting in the fence down there, you know? you know? So again, I, a lot of times in the winter, I'll just leave, leave my camera in black and white. Okay. Um, now another thing I started to love. So I took one of my old cameras. Uh, I had an old uh, Panasonic Lumix GX7, but I just loved the camera and I hated to part with it, but new cameras had coming out that I came out that I was using. So I, um, there's this company, Life Pixel. Um, they're in, do you know, Kate, they're in Muckle Teo? Muckle Teo, I think. Yeah, they're a little bit north of Seattle. Yeah, and um, you don't go, don't go there. Um, I asked the guy if I could come by and he said no. <laughs> he, he said he, he, he keeps it a secret how he does it, but he shows you online. But what they do is if you've got an older camera, um, and this is, a, this is a good opportunity, and I have to put a plug in once in a while. This is a good opportunity to have an old camera converted and buy a new Lumix camera, is you can send your camera to them, and they take off a filter that is on the sensor. There's an infrared filter on the sensor, and they, it's, it's a, um, and they replace it with another one that allows it to just shoot in black and white. And again, this scene, I was in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and the light here was incredibly harsh. This was, you know, um, uh, late morning, I think. Um, and it just, it just made a horrible color picture. But when I looked through the, the um, frame at the infrared, this is what I saw. This is, you see it looking like this in the frame. I think I have another one here. This is one I took. This, again, is a fairly gray day on the Willamette River, like we're, right where I live here in Portland. And um, again, this was a very drab scene. Uh, when I looked through it, it was gray, the rocks, the water, the trees back there. And I had my infrared camera with me and the infrared just made those trees in the back just turn white and pop. Um, and so that, that's one of my favorite, uh, my, my favorite things to do. It costs, I think I paid, I don't know what he's charging now. I paid about $300 to have my camera converted. And I've just gotten so much use out of it. Um, uh, over the past, I've had it for about five years now. Have you done any portraits with that? Because I, I feel like infrared portraits definitely have kind of an interesting and unique look and feel too. They do, I, I wish I had one here to show you, but um, a tip about taking, taking those that I learned is eyes look very odd. Okay, you know that, so the, the, the pupil of the person's eye turns jet black, 
just pure black. So if they're in a um, darker environment and their pupils are large, um, it looks like they look like zombies. <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but I learned this because I was in Arizona and I was shooting in there and their, and their pupils are, um, are, I'm sorry, they're closed down. And so they're, they're smaller and the person looks more natural. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing I learned, I shot a friend of mine, um, her daughter was pregnant and she wanted me to do a pregnancy picture, you know, where she just had like, a, a, showing the stomach and she just had, you know, covering her top and, and everything else, but her stomach was showing and the infrared showed all of the veins that were on the surface. <laughs> And luckily, she thought it was kind of cool, <laughs> but, but not many other people did. It's not one I would show online, but, but she, she thought it was interesting. But you didn't see any of these veins, but because it's responding to heat and light, uh, infrared light, you never quite know what it's going to pick up. Yeah. Well, I know that a lot of people use infrared converted cameras or infrared film for landscape photography because of how the pop happens, like these trees. Yes. What do you do in post-production with your infrared images? Good, good question. How you, edit, how you edit them. Yeah, because the, 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 the um, photos will come out of the camera. They'll be very low in contrast, and they'll, be, they'll just be very flat looking. In fact, when you bring it into something like Lightroom, um, it, it looks unusable. And so I use um, a program that uh, I think is, it's owned by DXO now. It's uh, Nick Filters. Nick Silver Effects, it's called. It's a download. I can't remember what it costs, but it's available from DxO. Uh, if so, if you Google DxO or you Google Nick um, Nick Filters or Nick Silver Effects, um, I use that because it has a bunch of presets built in, and I can just go down these presets and generally find something I like. But what it's doing basically is adding a lot of contrast to it um, because that that's that's what it needs to get it out of that. Like I said, you'll, when you first look through the camera, you'll think, um, what did he tell me? Why did I do this? <laughs> and, um, but if you play around with it, and there's a lot of tutorials online. In fact, um, LifePixel has a lot of great tutorials. They have a guy who does great um, infrared and he, and he teaches a lot of classes for it. So those, those, are all the, those are all the slides I've got. So now another thing I do on the camera too is, um, and I, I, this, is, this, is a, this is a good example of this picture of the guy on the beach here. Um, this was my best friend when we were about 15 years old. So this was shot with a um, Yashica square format camera, uh, a 120 film Yashica 645 it was called. And um, it took a square negative. So a lot of times what I'll do on my um, camera is I can change the aspect ratio. And that again is just in the camera menu. You go to aspect ratio, it's normally set to three to four uh, or, or three to two or four to three. Um, there's one to one, which at first for a long time threw me off. It's like, what does one to one mean? One to one is square. And so if I put it in square black and white, um, all of a sudden I'm shooting like I was, you know, when I had my first uh, twin lens reflex camera. Now, another thing I do to the pictures, Kate, is I vignette them a little bit. So they're a little darker around the edges, which makes me feel like they have more of a vintage look um, right. from, from cameras when they, when they did that, you know? So when you're shooting in the square format or the one-to-one -one format, you're still shooting in JPEG and RAW. So you still have an uncropped RAW file, right? <laughs> Yeah, good point. Yeah, so your JPEG is square, but your raw file is the full size of the of the frame. So, you know, again, it's like a safety net. Um, you know, if if you get home and you wish, boy, I sure would have shot that in color. You've got it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So someone's asking about handling negatives. Um, have any of the negatives you've been working with? Do they have smudges or fingerprints? Do you have any tips for cleaning those off? Oh yeah, so, well, they also have a lot of scratches, unfortunately, because I've been, I've been uh, moving them around for years and years. Right. So you'll see like in the one of the, uh, this, this guy on the, on the left here in this slide is a Vietnam veteran. This was a Vietnam veterans against the Vietnam War protest. You'll see on the back of this guy's jacket, all these dust. And so I would normally take that into Photoshop and retouch that out. Um, 
and fix any scratches or things like that. And yeah, they do have fingerprint, they get fingerprints and I use a, um, I'm sure uh, up in your darkroom department, you sell um, film cleaner. Um, most people haven't used it for years. There's a liquid that you can actually clean the negatives with. And then there's cl special cloths you clean them with. Well, and also like the little white cotton gloves you can get, those yeah. would help a little bit, I would think too. They really in work. handling them, right? Exactly, yeah. Would, would, you, would you like a brief demonstration if I can pull this off and, and show you what my phone looks like? I'm sure, I mean, it, do you have more photos to show? No, no, that, no that's, that's all. So oh, okay. I, just, I went through, but I could, I could show a demonstration of how to do, I can try to anyways, can we, can we try this? Yeah, let's try it. Let's okay, so let, let me, let, <laughs> I've never, I've never, okay, so I'm gonna unplug this camera. Hey guys, this is live. <laughs> this, this is live, <laughs> live from Portland, Oregon. <laughs> okay, so is this going to work? Mark Toll, oh, come on, it worked, it worked before I, uh, <laughs> of course, before I. Uh, Unplugged it. <laughs> yeah, so hold on a second here. Let's see, I don't think I have to share my screen to do this. No, it should just come up there. Uh-oh, you didn't tell I'm just showing some of the product that we have uh, available for cleaning your negatives. Oh, thank you. So that's, that's Devin, who's out on our sales floor right now. Um, and he just party crashed with a photo of some of the chemicals. So we do have uh, products available if you have older negatives and do want to clean them up. Um, we do, we, we can be a resource for that. We have product and gloves and things like that. So um, feel free to give the store a call or look for those products online at glazerscamera.com. Okay, we had it, I had it there for a minute. I was just gonna demonstrate this app, but uh, uh, just isn't gonna do it. <laughs> Hold on, oh, wait a second here. I think I got it. There we go, okay. So here's, here's my phone and, uh, and this bit of magic, I'm sure all of you know, but I didn't know this until a couple weeks ago, is I can buy a HDMI adapter uh, output for my, for my iPhone. So I have this plugged in so you can see it on my computer. Okay, now what I've done is I have, um, these are negatives that I've already taken pictures of. So you can see the app down in the lower left there, it's called Film Developer. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up Film Developer. And it says, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a color negative or a black and white negative? Can everybody see that okay? Is that? Is, yeah. Okay. Got it. So I can either choose now, I can choose a new photo. This is going to let me take a picture of a slide, or I can go to my album. So I'm going to go to my album, and I'm going to choose a negative like this one right here. Oops. Oops, ha, huh, that's a positive. <laughs> let me choose the negative. I've, I've already converted a lot of these, so let me see. Oh, um, let's see, where is, give me a second here. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, there, there we go, here are negatives. So here's the negative, okay, that comes up that I just took a picture of on a light table. So the program lets me grab these handles in the corner here and crop it here like this, but I could crop it later on if I wanted to. Now, all I simply do is you see down in the bottom left corner, or bottom right corner, there's a button that says done. I hit done and it's converted. Wow, that's pretty that's cool. It. Now, the only, the only controls I have here are brightness and contrast. I can't, in a, and because of the lighting I'm using, I'm getting this, but uh, I'm getting this yellowish tone. But in the upper right now, if I hit save, that saves that to my photos folder. And then I can go into Snapseed or whatever program you use on your computer to um, adjust the picture. That's great. That, okay. That's really easy and simple. Okay, let me see if I can actually pull this off and plug my camera back in here so you can see my face again. <laughs> See if that's gonna work. There we go. <laughs> Oops. This doesn't like me doing this during the presentation. Let me choose my. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> it is back. So that's really cool that you know you can do that so easily just with your phone. It's it's amazing how much we use that. You know, I, I'm making jokes. I'm finally using my phone as a phone for the past couple of weeks. Uh, normally, I just use it as a camera. 
and, and uh, Instagram editor. <laughs> um, but that's really cool that you're able to uh, put that together. So um, I, I hate to do it, but we are, we're about at our end time and uh, I'm getting some messages from Zoom. <laughs> uh, so if any, does anybody have any last minute questions? Bueller. Okay. So thank you all, thank you all for listening. <laughs> yeah. Thank every, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mark from Panasonic. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we really appreciate your time and energy. And uh, again, email me if you have other suggestions um, and tune in tomorrow. We're going to be here on a different topic with a different company. So uh, check out our list of events on uh, glazerscamera.com slash workshops. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much.